Hey guys, how's it going? I have a head tilt because I've had all kinds of issues. <laughs> like that's anything new. But um, I just finished my workout a little while ago. 474, which was from Turbo Fire, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. But um, I came in here to plug my camera in and it showed me it was all out of batteries. And I'm like, it's been sitting in there charging for three days. So I have it plugged in right now, which is why I'm looking at it like, don't mess with me. I'm not in the mood. Um, I'm also being rude and eating my oatmeal while I'm talking to you. But, oh, here's what's so funny. I was just um, making a couple of my vlogs live last night and I realized that I shot them last Sunday. <laughs> I think last, or maybe it was Sunday or Monday, I don't remember. But in the vlog, I was saying that, oh, I got up really late, and so I'm starting late, and I was eating my oatmeal. And wow, here I am again. But last night was a really sucky sleep night. I don't know what was going on, but um, we had a lot of internal meetings um, with my team on Friday, and I swore to myself, that this weekend I would actually take a normal person's weekend. Like I wouldn't work the whole weekend, and I did, and I stuck to it. In case you're wondering, see that? My nail appointment is not till Thursday, and this nail broke right, it's like right here, where you literally, there's nothing to glue it back onto until my nail appointment. And the thing is, is that you have to put a band-aid and keep that nail on, or you'll try to be typing and doing all kinds of things with your, your hands. And you'll have this phantom nail that's not there, and it just is bizarre. These are, they've become like a part of me. For those of you that have been asking me to flex, there you go. We're getting there, people. Quite pleased. Anyway, I um, actually have been getting super organized. Uh, a little bit more organized every day um, and in fact one of the things that I've started to do because I'm I know all of you guys say hey it's cool if you have these really long vlogs and I just get on the treadmill and watch you I'm sure that those will never go away but I also have so many of you guys asking me a lot of questions about what's helping me be successful this year versus you know kind of the last two years of plateauing and being stagnant and depressed and whatever so I think what I'm gonna be doing on my blog and also with my videos is really, which I'm giving you a soft plug for Jack Canfield, who I love. Dang on it, hold on. I have a lot of stuff on my counter. It's one of my favorite books, one of my favorite business books of all time. And I don't know if you can see, you know that when you've read a book and you have a lot of earmarked pages, um, it's good. But anyway, I took this book out again because I won't get into too many details, but one of the things that became very clear to me towards the end of last year, maybe January, is that all of last year, really the first year and a half since I founded the company, um, Fitfluential for those of you that might not know, um, everything happened so fast and so far, 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 far beyond what I ever could have dreamed or imagined that I feel like we, myself especially, have been in kind of like, you know, uh, reactive mode and, and kind of getting up every day and going, okay, what do we need to do? And everybody's just like, it's like the house is on fire and you have, you know, three people that are just running all over the place and we're just trying to do what we all can. And there really hasn't been a game plan. That's maybe not the best analogy. Um, and you know, you guys know I'm all about analogies and metaphors to, to make a point. Oh, one of the ones I used last time was an airplane, probably because I just watched that movie Flight with Denzel Washington. That's a whole other story. Um, so I kept thinking about, you know, th this frenzied, like, reactive state in my business, which then translated or, or transferred over into my personal life and certainly my workout life. This frenzied, mad, dis disorganized, um, crazed environment was it was affecting me, it was affecting me personally, it was affecting me professionally. Um, I, I always felt tired, I always felt run down, I wasn't taking care of myself, and that's no good. What good is it for me to have founded this great fitness, health, and wellness company that's helping everybody else and I'm not helping myself? Not cool. So, one of the things that we decided, um, and I personally decided too, that I want for my business and for myself is to, okay, take a step back and instead of, you know, 
just moving ahead and, and reacting to this tsunami of demand that's been coming in. Take a step back, analyze everything. What worked, what didn't work, how can we do better, where can we do better, and then what are the steps? So it's a lot of, um, you know, doing what you have to do with your fitness goals, which is write your goals out, and then instead of just thinking about them, and reference my blog post the past two days, um, and what is today, by the way? I probably should put a note on this. So this is on kellyalexa.com, the posts for, today's March 11th, March 10th and March 9th, where I said, one blog post was, yes, it is that big of a deal, and then the other one is, no, it's not that big of a deal. So put your goals up. You've got to put your goals up. And then instead of you know making it this big goal, like maybe you're just starting and you're like, I want to lose 50 pounds. And then to you, that goal sounds so big and you haven't been able to do it in the past with whatever methods you've used. It's going to sound so big and so hairy. They always say, you know, your big hairy monster goal that you're going to get overwhelmed. But you know what? When you break it down, break anything down, and the only reason that this made me think of it is because one of the chapters I had earmarked is how to chunk it, how to chunk it down. Is when you when you think of any goal, business, personal, professional, whatever it is, it's always going to seem too overwhelming, right? It's always going to seem like, oh, no way. I can never do that, whatever. Well, first of all, stop talking that way. Second of all, um, there's always action steps, but you work backwards. Put your goal on a piece of paper and then say, okay, for example, remember when I came back from Florida and I decided I needed to get out of my house? You've got to do the market research. You've got to find out what houses are selling for. You've got to decide what are your best options financially. You've got to look at worst case scenario, best case scenario. And, and sometimes that's a really good idea, people. We get so worked up in our minds that things are far worse than they're ever going to be. For example, like when I wanted to quit my job, you know, I imagined all these horrible things. And you know what? When I realized what the worst things that could happen to me were if I quit my job, which was, what if, what if I quit my job? What if I put all this effort into my business and the business doesn't take off? What's the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is I start interviewing again and to earn extra money while I'm interviewing, maybe I have to get a bartending job. Maybe I have to go back to waiting tables. Is that the worst thing that could happen? There's, there's no way that I'm gonna be like left alone in a field with no money and no food. I mean, it's just not that big of a deal. And you've gotta keep telling yourself, you've got this, you'll handle this. Whatever it is that comes your way, you'll handle it, okay? You've handled stuff in the past. Stop worrying about things before they happen and understand that whatever happens, you'll handle it. I used to do that with work. Things would come across or I would anticipate things that had never even happened yet, I'm like, oh, what if I do this? What if I do this? What if he says this? What if he pulls me into this meeting and then this happens? And guess what? It never happened. The bad stuff never happened. Here's me not eating my oatmeal. Um, oatmeal with PB2 is amazing. Um, anyway, so one of the things I'm going to be doing now that I'm eight minutes in, eating like a pig, um, is writing down all the questions that you guys are, are writing to me on my blog, writing down the questions that you're asking me in email, um, and that I've had conversations with via text or whatever, and then kind of putting it by topic on my blog, um, which for those of you that just watch me on YouTube, my blog is just my name, kellyalexa.com. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. And, you know, a couple of things off the top of my head um, that two people I had a conversation with the past week um, Caitlin and Barbara. <laughs> um, and one of the things that Barbara was asking me is, you know, kind of about cardio and the cardio that I'm doing. And you guys know that I am doing more cardio right now. But the thing is, I'm doing a lot more cardio, but I'm also heavy weight training. So I don't think that the question was not necessarily from Barbara, but from other people like, oh, well, I just want to do a bunch of cardio, but I heard that's bad if I just do a lot of cardio. I'm not the trainer, I'm not the one to say this, but it's my opinion that yeah, if you only do cardio, like if you're only running, if you're only doing kickboxing, if you're only doing, you know, I, I don't know, anything that has no component, and your life has no component of strength training, um, your body's gonna look a lot differently, and I do believe that you'll hit, if you're trying to lose weight with cardio only, um, you're gonna hit a wall. Because, you know, a couple people have asked me, 
you know, what is it that's working for you? I, I am doing more cardio, but you know, when I hit the gym, I'm not using green dumbbells. I'm not using pink dumbbells and I'm not trying to, you know, get toned. But at the same time, you know, <laughs> I'm getting smaller in size. In fact, I went down a bra size. What does that tell you? Um, so I'm getting leaner. The scale, the numbers on the scale are, are going down slower, but you know, who cares? Because the way I look and the way I stand in front of the mirror, I mean, the changes I'm seeing are extraordinary. So yes, I do cardio every single day, um, sometimes twice a day, and I love it. I'm one of those people that loves cardio. How can you not love cardio when you have fun stuff like Turbo Fire and Kathy, and I finally got that stuck DVD out of my um, out of my laptop, my Ilaria Body Strikes. I mean, I have, look at this. I've got so, I have Insanity, I have, uh, Rev Abs, I've got, you know, P90X, which I don't do as much, but I've got Tony Horton's one I'm with. I've got, I'm like a kid at Christmas every day when I decide what cardio I'm going to do from home. And then when I'm at the gym and I'm going to do stairs or if I'm going to do treadmill, I make it fun. You know, I mix it up. I mix up the way I'm putting my feet down. If I'm using the stairs, you might go, how can you mix up the stairs? Try, you know, when you're stepping up, stepping up and pressing down and, um, kind of doing like a calf raise, you know, so you step down, you're doing tiptoes, and then alternate to like a wider step, alternate with your feet like this, and then your feet like this, you're all hitting different parts of your bum, which I gotta tell you guys, my bum is getting better by the minute, okay? I'm just gonna say that, I'm putting it out there. Because it's out there. Anyway, um, so that's the, uh, the quick cardio answer, and then the second answer was, oh, Caitlin. Caitlin had seen some of my pictures of the DVDs, and she's like, I don't know how you motivate yourself to work out at home. She said that has to, something like, you know, that has to be so hard. And I gotta tell you, my opinion, I think it's easier to motivate yourself to train at home than it is at the gym. Call me crazy. Now, a lot of you do, that's fine. It's warranted. Um, the thing is about me and the gym, and I live closer to my gym now than I ever have before, and I love it once I get to the gym, but let me tell you, Sometimes, especially, maybe it's for me because I work from home or whatever, um, sometimes I'll go, oh, you know, I've got to get my gym back together, I've got to make sure I've got this, I've got this, then you have to get dressed, then you have to get in the car, then you have to go. For me, sometimes those little things, and I know that's really silly, because once I'm there, I love it, um, will prohibit me from going. But then again, I need to follow my own advice and realize, what? Say it? It's not that big of a deal, and just do it. For me, also, I don't know how you, I'm going to even play just the beginning of this DVD. You hear that I've got good music playing in the background, and I think music is key to amp you up, whether you're on the treadmill or whether you're in a DVD. And I might have to, hold on. One second. I'm going to press stop on the music so you can hear this. One second. I'll be right back. Hopefully that'll stay off because you all know I have issues with these things. So this is the very beginning of Turbo Fire. And okay, I'm just sharing this with you guys because I think you know, like my goal in sharing it with you is not to try to be this um, salesperson and get you to buy it. Yes, you can buy it from my um, Beachbody website. And yes, I would earn commission and yes, I would appreciate it, but that's not why I'm telling you about this. I tell you about stuff that I earn nothing on and you all know that I've been doing that for years. So the thing is with Turbo Fire, I'm just so annoyed with myself because my friend Jessica lent me her Turbo Fire like a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, and I tried one DVD. The problem is I didn't do the instructional DVD. So I tried to dive in like an idiot without learning the moves, and of course I couldn't do the moves, so what did I do? I gave up. Now I have this and I realize there's like eight billion workouts in here, and I love it so much. You guys, I did not sleep at all last night. I think I started telling you that 15 minutes ago. I did not sleep at all last night. I was up until at least three or four in the morning. There are freaking coyotes out here in my back, whatever, in the fields and whatever, and freaking attacking and eating something it was just disgusting. Um, but I couldn't sleep. My mind was racing. I think it was racing just about everything. And I couldn't sleep, so I slept in, and I got up. Aunt Flo is in town, she arrived Sunday, and so I'm feeling that, I'm pissed off that I hadn't slept. It was just kind of down. And I popped this DVD in, and I'm like, oh, I'm 
starting so late on my workout. I'm so upset. I had to move my lunch. I had a really fun lunch appointment planned and I had to move my lunch and every kind of move everything back a day. And I just, my whole thought process was like, oh, I'm starting late. I'm going to be eating my carbs late. I'm going to be doing this late. I'm going to have to go see my mom late, blah, blah, blah. I'm just so upset. And then I'm like, put the damn DVD in Kelly and shut up. You got to talk to your inner self. So I pop this DVD in and this is the beginning. Let me get it to the beginning because you just got it. I hear the music and I'm like, how can I not go in and have fun? Let me tell you. Well, talking has burned another 25 calories, but literally like I, I put this on, I was in my office, I think I was putting my polar on and then awesome. So glad you were about to start class. Huge calorie burner plan for you. So grab your spot. Hope you brought a towel. Follow the water. Hold on. Let's get class started. All right, guys, you ready? You're going to hear the music in a second. Yeah, bump it up. Are you ready to work today? Roll on. Good. Got a great calorie burner plan for you. So I'm so glad you came to class today. Turn your belly button on the opposite wall. Good. There you go. We're getting there. Seriously, these workouts are so fun. Her music mixes are so fun. I'm so annoyed that I didn't stick with it or, or keep it or buy it a year and a half ago. Um, I have a blast. She is adorable. Full disclosure, Shalene is a friend of mine, um, so I'm obviously biased. Um, I think she's adorable, um, and I'm just having a lot of fun. And frankly, Caitlin um, and anybody else that's been asking me, um, you know, when you have fun stuff like this, I mean, really, I, I'm not lying. I get up every morning and I do cardio, empty stomach, of course, today it's freaking almost noon. Um, and I look in my goodie box and I've got, so I've got Turbo Fire, which I'm addicted to. I think I, you guys literally, do you see all these DVDs in here? Of course I got the advanced set with everything in it. But I think I've only done maybe 10% of the videos in here. Um, Les Mills Combat doesn't have as many. It's also cheaper. Um, this one I've probably done 40% of the workouts. I previewed a couple of the other ones and I'm going to do it. Also, let me just do a little preview at the last moment. I brought these out here because half the time I want to talk about my new shoes and then I'm wearing them and then I look stupid. These are the new Reeboks. These are the DMX Sky. I am absolutely crazy about these shoes, okay? Um, yeah, it looks kind of space age and funky. And you know, for, at first glance I saw it, I'm like, I just like it because it has like bigger heels on it. Okay, I'm just going to be on, I'm just putting it out there. I'm shallow and whatever. So I like the fact that it had more um, heel structure on the bottom. I put these on. It's almost like I'm walking on my Technogel mattress. Seriously. So I don't know how to describe it, but you see these bubbles? You just feel it. And I did kickboxing and jumping in these in plyo. Um, I'm probably going to order like three more pair. So I'm, I really love these shoes. These are my favorite shoes. Some of the other ones I've told you, you know, the Real Flex. Um... For me, they're so light, the early ones, the, the Real Flex early ones. Everybody else loved those. I like a shoe that feels kind of weighted down. I like my, my feet to feel locked in. It's personal preference, people. These, the cushion on the bottom plus the, the sturdiness. This is very sturdy. You see, this is not like the, the really cloth, almost minimalist feel I felt with uh, the Real Flex. I love these. I'm going to do a specific separate review. You just feel like you're walking on little bubbles of cushions and it's freaking awesome. Now where's my remote? I have to go eat. I'm going to make some eggs to have with my oats and here's my coffee. Yes, I'm still doing my coffee the same way. Can you see it? Ooh, I also have something else exciting to tell you guys later this week, but I can't do it right now. So I think I said that I might do 12 minutes, but it's 18 minutes. So cheers to you. I will talk to you tomorrow. And one last flex because everybody is writing to me and going, Kelly, you haven't been flexing for a while. Of course, you didn't say it that way, but I know what you mean. So I got to go. And yes, I did specifically plan to match my headband to my shirt because I'm, that's how I roll. We match. And I will tell you that my shoes are blue too. And I'm in my own house and no one can see it. 